Hello guys and welcome back to Fatboss TV. Today we're having a look at another boss from Ray Testing on the Legion Alpha with Star Augur Etrius in the Nighthold. Yes, a particularly difficult name to say. It's taken us about 10 takes. But either way, it is a pretty cool fight. It is a four-phase fight, but it's relatively short, which is nice. And the way that the boss works is he kind of has the same four base abilities, but they change every single phase in a small way. So it's once again, it's very similar to Margok, except it doesn't last an eternity, yeah. which is pretty cool. So the boss does appear to be the 8th boss in the instance, we can't really say for sure because the dungeon journal sort of keeps flipping bosses all over the place. And you do start off in a room, and you're in this room for the entire fight actually, which is a little bit small, a little bit claustrophobic, but the walls do drop at some point and just reveal the most amazing skyboxes you've ever seen, and they actually change phase by phase. Just keep an eye on the footage and you'll see what we mean when we say it just looks fucking awesome. It's pretty much Algalon. Yeah, it's it that is. sort of shit going on. So anyway, let's kick off what's going on in phase one. Well, so phase one is kind of the introductory phase. It only lasts for 10% of his HP, so it pretty much lasts no time at all because everyone's fucking nuking the bastard with all their trinkets and stuff. And he only casts two abilities. The first one is Starburst, and he'll just spam cast this on the tanks. It deals unavoidable magic damage to a single tank, and that's it. It just deals a bit of damage to them over and over again. And this becomes modified as the fight goes on. Yeah, exactly. And one thing is, is because you, this pretty much replaces his melee attack, and the boss is just not movable. You cannot move the boss in any of the phases because he's always casting this. It's not interruptible, so he's going to be standing still for the entire fight. He also has Coronal Ejection. This will just debuff several players, and the debuff will do a big burst of damage upon application, and then just deal some ticking damage over 8 seconds. Once again, all of these different ejection spells will change phase by phase. So for this one, it just deals a bit of damage, which is completely unavoidable, and you heal it up. And that's all he does in this phase. This phase kind of seems a little bit pointless, and um, but when he does reach 90% HP, it starts picking up. It actually starts becoming a good fight, and the walls fall down, and you get to see the awesome skybox around you, and now you are in the ice phase. So his tank spell has now become Ice Burst. This works the exact same way as before. However, it will now do splash damage to anyone within six yards, so the tanks can't be stacked and no one else can be near the tanks. The ejection, which we saw in phase one, the thing that applies the debuffs, these debuffs now are icy. They deal slightly more damage, they last slightly longer, they now last for 10 seconds, and they also slow players. On top of this, when they expire, the players will shatter, dealing high amount of damage to anyone within eight yards of them. So it's pretty much like Gruul's shatter. You yeah. have a debuff, you need to run out the raid, you need to make sure that no one's nearby you, and then after it has exploded, you just go back to the raid, I guess, and just yeah. keep fighting. So that's pretty much how that works. Yeah, and the boss continually keeps adding more and more of these each time he casts it. So the first time he casts it, it went on three people, then it went on six people the next time, and then it just keeps growing and growing. So there is like a kind of a little bit of a soft enrage going on each phase, and this is the case for every single ejection as well. So you're kind of against the clock in every phase. Now in this particular phase, we decided to stack, and the reason for that is an ability called Frigid Nova. This just deals 2.5 million damage to all players in the raid. However, the more players that are within five Five yards of you the less damage you take so having our entire raid stacked up when this ability came in made the ability do next to no damage at all it's barely even noticeable um we found out that our tanks didn't really need to stack up in order to survive this ability but i guess if you really wanted to you could have the tanks go and stand on the raid as well yeah. um but of course they would have to move out very very quickly afterwards because of how the ice burst ability is splashing off them and really also another reason why the tanks probably isn't a good idea to stack is because they will actually get a debuff that indicates that a comet is about to land on them. This debuff has three stacks, and that indicates that three comets are going to land on them. Each time a comet lands on them, it removes one stack of the debuff. Now, each time the tank is actually hit by a meteor, they receive a debuff that lasts permanently that just deals ticking damage. Now, in order to remove this debuff, you need to have three players go and stand right next to the tank that will cause the debuff to be removed, and these players will now get a new debuff that just simply prevents them from getting the debuff off the tank for 12 seconds. So the way that we were dealing with this ability is that we let the tank get hit by all three meteors completely on his own, and then we just send three designated players to go run over, remove the debuff, and then come back to the group. Now, this is probably not going to be the case for live. In the Dungeon Journal, it's suggesting that the tank will be taking about 1.2 million damage every two seconds per stack so if he has three debuffs on him he's going to be taking 3.6 million damage every two seconds and that's probably a little bit crazy however in the fight it was doing nowhere near that much damage so 
on live, you're probably going to have to set two groups of three players to go and soak it and take turns because, of course, you can't do it all the time because you'll have that debuff on you. But at least during our testing, we could just send one group of three people and it was absolutely fine. Now, the boss would just continue to cycle through these abilities until he hit 60% health where he'll transition into phase three. Now, all of the boss's abilities have now been modified with Fell Magic instead of Ice Magic. So, the burst on the tanks is now Fell Burst. This will just deal a small amount of damage to the tank and it doesn't do any splash anymore. Instead, it just applies a fairly weak dot that just stacks up. Now, the dot does stack up pretty quickly because the boss is just spam casting this ability. However, there are certain parts of this phase that give you ample opportunity to drop your stacks and we'll cover those in a moment. Now, the boss's Nova spell is not Frigid Nova anymore, it's Fell Nova. This will deal 4 million damage damage to all players. However, the further you are from the boss, the less damage you take. Now, it seems like unless you were right on the very edge of the room, kind of like running against the invisible wall, this will pretty much annihilate you. Fortunately, you do have a fairly long time to react to this because it's a fairly long cast time. So just move towards the edges of the room and everyone was fine. That's all we needed and to, to do. And to be honest, this is probably a good opportunity to use things like Speed Increase Totem and like Stampeding Raw because there wasn't really any other opportunities where those spells would be efficient. Now, the ejection in this phase is, strangely enough, Fell Ejection. The debuff is applied to, like, the same amount of players, and it just causes them to take the ticking damage over 8 seconds. However, now, each time they do take ticking damage, they'll leave a pool of Fell Flame on the floor, and this will just last until the end of the phase. Now, this Fell Flame will deal damage to you, but it'll also leave a fairly high damage dot to anyone who stands in it, so you've got to be very careful. Quick reaction is pretty much the key to dealing with this fell ejection. If you can spot the debuff quickly, then you can then place the fire that it leaves in a good location. We generally decided to remain stacked in this phase, and anyone who did have this debuff would run to one side of the room and leave the fire there, as clumped up as possible. Not only did this free up as much space as possible, so you can move to the other side of the room for the fell over without having to run through fire, but it also helped the tanks clear the fire with their comets. So when the tanks are marked to get comets on them in this phase, they'll be getting five comets. All the comets do is that they land and they deal some damage to the tank and anyone within five yards of them. It doesn't apply a dot or anything anymore. However, now what it does, it will destroy any fell flame within the five yard explosion radius. This just allows your tank to go around and clean up as much fire as they can with the five comets that they're given. We had our tank marked with a raid icon so we could see exactly where he is and just kind of allowed him to move around wherever he wanted to clear the fire, whilst anyone nearby him would move out of the way just to avoid the fell comet damage. Now, whilst the tank is running around with the comets, this is the perfect time to drop your fell burst stacks because the comets always go on the tank who has the highest threat. That means he's going to be having the stacks as soon as the comets start going on him, the other tank will taunt and that way you can drop your stacks. It's just a very easy way of doing it. So that's all it is for this phase. Again, the boss will just keep cycling through these abilities. But as you can see towards the end of the phase where you're starting to reach the phase four threshold, there's a lot of fire about. Yeah. And it becomes increasingly more and more difficult for the tank to actually cover them all. Um, and that's why we decided to use this like semicircle strat. We keep one half of the room completely clear and one half of the room caked in fire. And then as soon as the boss does transition at 30%, fortunately all the fires do despawn. Yeah, so even if it's super messy, it cleans itself up. But the idea was, you know, if we had that other half of the room clear, if something goes wrong, well, at least we can just run over there. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, so phase four. The boss has now been enhanced with void magic. This means that the fell burst is now a void burst. This is just, again, a stacking dot that's applied to the tank. When it expires, it will jump to two other targets who will each receive half the stacks it had when it expired. So you want your tanks to be taunting on as low stacks as possible just to reduce the amount of damage that's going out on the raid. All the debuff does is simply just do ticking damage and that's it. But again, when it runs out on the other two people that's jumped to, it'll then jump to four people and then it'll jump to eight people. So eventually your entire raid will have it and the stacks will just keep going up and up on all of them. So this is like a pseudo enrage effect going out on the raid. And the thing is, this is even accelerated because the boss's Nova ability in this phase is Void Nova, strangely enough, and it will just do a flat amount of damage to the raid, but also apply one stack of Void Burst to everyone. And that you just see all of these things jumping it's, about. It's, it's like, basically very, very difficult for you to drop your stacks completely. In yeah. this. I mean, it is possible if you're lucky enough, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's, it's especially towards the end of the fight, everyone's going to have high stacks and everyone's going to be taking super high taking damage. Now, the Void Ejection in this phase is just a debuff applied to a few random players that deals a burst of damage immediately and then another burst of damage when it times out. 
and when it does expire it'll also spawn an ad called a voidling now these ads don't have any abilities whatsoever all they'll do is melee hit now these little ads just felt like cannon fodder more than anything else yeah. So we just decided to stack them up underneath the boss, just have the tank pick them up and just cleave them down. So apart from the ad spawning, the void ejection, it just deals damage to a single target, so there's no reason not to be stacked in this phase, especially when the stacks on the entire raid are going up and up and up and the healing is becoming more demanding. So we literally just had the entire raid stacked, and yeah, that was it. We just AoE healed as much as we possibly could. Now tanks in this phase will still have to deal with a comet, and of course, this time it's now a void comet. This just deals a small amount of damage to the tank and anyone within 5 yards. But most importantly, it will spawn an ad with the best name ever. The thing which should not be. And that is literally the name of the fucking That's ad. That's so fucking stupid and it's great. I love it. So yeah, this thing ad is what we're going to call it from now on. First and foremost, it does have an aura around it that will reduce the damage the boss takes by 99%. So it does need to be out of range. Because the boss is in the very middle of the room, you kind of want to tank it right towards the edges and like because you can decide where it spawns because it spawns on where the comet lands we made it so the tank that is going to be hit by the comet already moves out so the ad spawns out there that way the boss and the ad will take full damage which is very important because then you're kind of against the clock because of all the void bursts going out now these ads you do need to kill off you can't just let loads of them spawn over the course of the fight because there's so many implications on where you can tank them and whatnot especially if you've already got one up and the other tanks tanking the boss you're just gonna have problems with comets all over the place but the ad is really really bad because of one ability that he has which is witness of the void this is an uninterruptible cast that deals a burst of damage to the entire raid but on top of that if any players are facing towards the direction of the ad they'll also be feared for eight seconds so you need to make sure that everyone is facing away from the ad as soon as this ability goes off and if you have multiple ads going off it's going to be difficult finding an area of the room where you're constantly looking away. It's just not feasible. So you do need to kill this ad off as soon as you possibly can. The ad also needs to die quickly for another reason, because each time it casts Witness of the Void, it will gain a buff which increases its damage output by 100%. And we found that if it's casting its third Witness of the Void, and it has like a 200% damage increase, if you don't use a big healing cooldown, it's very likely that you're going to die, because it just does so, so much damage. So make sure that everyone turns to kill that ad, but make sure they turn away when they're about to be feared for eight seconds, because if you're feared at this point, and see you have the ejection on you, you'll be out of the group, the ads will be spawning out of the group, and you won't be getting the AoE healing, and everyone's going to hate you if you get feared. Yeah, I mean, and that's more or less this encounter. It's all about just killing the boss and killing the ad before your stacks go up too high. Yeah. And of course, killing the ad before that third blast goes off, because otherwise it probably is a white plate, you said. Um, so what do we think? So I do like this encounter. I think it's quite neat that the room changes each time the phase change comes in and you like get this awesome backdrop of like all this like fucking like the deep space and it actually changes so if you're in you're in the ice phase it's all blue and it's like green in the fell phase and it's like all purple and horrible in the in, in the, the last phase so yeah i think that's really really neat it's a nice way of showing different phases as well because sometimes the, you can't really tell when a phase change happens if unless you had like a boss mod whereas now it's very fucking obvious if it's a different phase because of all of this stuff going on one thing I would say about the encounter is that even though there is only four abilities, you could say like it's maybe too simple because there is those minor changes. Well, I wouldn't even say they're minor changes. They just, you know, they look like minor changes, but the way that you have to deal with the ability is quite significant. And yeah, it feels like a different fight in each phase. The comets are probably the biggest example of this. Like in the ice phase, you've got to make it so people like stack up with you periodically, like in between the comets to re like reduce your debuff. And then in the fell phase, you make it so the comets, you have to run around by yourself and clear fire. And in the last phase, you're spawning an ad that you need to tank, but face away at the same time. It's all crazy shit. And it's all the same ability still, which I really do like, because yeah. even though they're small changes, as you said, they make a very big difference to how you have to react to them. A little thing that I may be a bit sad about is um, the fact that pretty much phase one, two, and four, the correct strat seems to be just stack up. Yeah. Um, it's, it's very Dragon Soul-ish, where a lot of the encounters were, oh yeah, just stack up an AoE heal through it. And it did feel very much like that. Um, even though there are points where, of course, like say in the ice phase, you've got to move out with the icy ejections and stuff like that and then come back in. But overall, I would say there's probably not enough movement mechanics for me. Maybe it's because I play Hunter and I like running around like a nutcase, but I really do feel that there isn't that many movement mechanics and the correct thing to do is just stack up the entire time. In ways though, it's kind of a nice change because I don't think we've had a fight for a while where you can just sort of AFK the entire fight, apart from one phase. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, phase three, I, I, I mean, would in say terms, is I, I'm one. talking like from a healer's perspective, like yeah. just standing there and only eyeballing your bars. <laughs> you haven't done that for quite a while. I mean, it might even be Dragon Soul where, you, you know, it was like an entire tier 
where you're literally just spam healing yeah and not looking at anything else so yeah i, I kind of like it in that way but the thing is is that the damage output on this fight was severely undershooned like the tank debuff not working properly in was it phase two yeah, the, the ice, ice debuff phase. that was just doing virtually no damage whatsoever and the um pulsar damage on the raid also in the ice phase did very little damage yeah the only thing that actually felt like it was doing damage in this fight and was probably tuned properly was the fell nova that might even be slightly over tuned because yeah. even at max distance it still knocks you down to like half health or something and in the last phase the explosion from the ad like if I like that. I, thought I mean, it was very that, good. yeah, that's probably how it's supposed to be. Yeah, but yeah, they were the only things that felt like you actually needed to heal. Yeah, exactly. Um, but either way, still really good encounter. Really, really enjoyed it. Hopefully, with a little bit of scaling on it, it should look pretty good. So thank you very much for watching, guys. If you did enjoy this video, then make sure you do leave us a like. It helps us out a lot, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Thank you.